Hello. Hey guys, welcome to uh, Nomenclature Made Easy. Uh, this is going to be our first nomenclature video actually, so we're pretty excited to do this for you guys. Uh, if you haven't been keeping up to date, uh, me and Lyndon, we've been working on some NMR videos, the link of which will be right here in the cards, just click there. Uh, we made a two-parter uh, video called Hard NMR is Made Easy, and then Lyndon had his own video. Yeah, so like Frank said, I have my own video and it's called Hard NMR is Made Easy Part 2, or Problem 2, sorry. AKA uh, NMR's Made Easy Part 8. Mm -hmm. Yeah, there you go. Yeah, so be sure to check those out if you haven't seen them and they're on the cards. Now, for this video, we're going to be doing, uh, we're going to have a two parter. Part one is these four problems right here. I'll send it to the side. One, two, three, four. And then part two, and then part two is going to be three more problems that are even harder than I have uh, even more complicated functional groups. So, first, we're going to have you guys hit pause to try out these four problems on your own and come back and then we'll show you guys how we think about nomenclature. Okay, got it? All right, so hit pause, try it out first, and then we'll see you guys. Alrighty, welcome back. Did you guys get the four structures? Well, we're gonna go through this right now and you'll see if you got it right or not. But before that, if you're looking for the Clutch Prep coupon code for right now, it's orgomadeeasy-pen. And with that code, you can get 20% off by being a subscriber of Orgo Made Easy. And Clutch Prep is an awesome resource for Orgo, MCATs, physics, you name it. And if you don't know who they are, you can check our video right here in the cards for more information. All right. So now, going back to this, 1,5-dimethoxycyclopent, um, 1E is our first uh, molecule that we have to create. So when I see this uh, name, my first thought is, Okay, carbon-1 special, carbon-5 special, what's special about them? There is a dimethoxy. What is that? Di means two, methoxy is, we'll talk about it later, but there's one methoxy group on one and one on five. So two methoxies, one is on each. So just hold that thought for a second, we'll come back to it. Next, I need to find my parent chain. So that is this guy right here, pent. Pent, like pentagon, so five. And then, is it going to be a five-membered uh, chain? Well, not quite, because of this guy right here, cyclo. Cy cyclo, or yeah, cyclo means that your chain is cyclic, or a ring, basically. So we're going to have a pentagon, or cyclopentane, over here. Uh, and then, I'm going to come back to this later, but one ene, well, what functional group has the word ene in it? Alkene. So I'm going to call this carbon one. 2, and I'm going to give it a alkene right here. So this is all done. Next, let's just continue our numbering. Like before, we said 1,5-dimethoxy. Well, there's two methoxy groups. What's a methoxy group? Well, the oxy stands for oxygen, and meth is like methyl, so CH3. So methoxy is an OCH3. And there's one coming off carbon 1, and there's one coming off not two, but all the way around at five. OCH3. All right, and that's 1,5-dimethoxy cyclopent 1E. All right, so now I'm gonna hand it over to Lyndon and he's gonna go through this one for you guys. Okay, so like Frank said, next we're gonna go over problem number two, which is eight propoxy 37N trimethyl octa 1,6-diene 4-amine. So the first thing we're going to do, like Frank did earlier, is find the parent chain, which is right here. Octa, which means eight. So, one carbon here, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And I'm going to go ahead and label those. So one, eight. So we're going to start from left to right. So eight propoxy is signifying that the eight eighth carbon is special, like Frank said. And so we're gonna have a propoxy group there. And like the earlier pro earlier problem, oxy is gonna be an oxygen, and you're gonna have a propyl chain connected to that. So it's gonna be an ether. So I'll draw that in now. So it's gonna have an oxygen here, and then a propyl group. So a meth, eth, prop, three carbons. Okay, next is 37N, trimethyl. And so carbon three, carbon seven and the nitrogen are gonna be special with the trimethyl group. Now you can see from my chain right now, I do not have a nitrogen. 
which means we're going to have to look elsewhere in the name to find a nitrogen. And if we go all the way to the end, we see the group with the highest priority is an amine. And so on carbon number four, we're going to have an amine group. And so I'll draw that in now. And so we're not actually sure what's connected to the nitrogen here, or if it's primary, secondary, tertiary, substituted. And so I'll just leave N here and keep in mind that we'll have to go back to it. So going back to 37N, now we do have the N and we can finish this part of the problem. So for three, we're gonna have a methyl group, and then seven, also a methyl group, and then off the N, we'll have our last methyl group. And just keep in mind that trimethyl means three methyl groups. And so going forward, we have one six diene, and as before, ene refers to the alkene functional group. So on carbons one and six, so right here, and right here, and just make sure you know that the ene is starting at one and starting at six and not uh, the other way around. And so going back to the final part, this N again needs a hydrogen here because the, your N is gonna be connected to three things. And so this is your final structure. If you got that, then congrats, you got the right structure. And I think Frank is gonna do problem number three now. All right, here we go, problem three. So we have, uh, yeah, good. All right, NN35 tetracyclohexyl cyclohexa 25-diene one amine. All right, that's a big name. So we know right away that nitrogen special, nitrogen special, carbons three, carbon five are all special. What's special about them? There's four cyclohexyl groups, one on each of them. And our parent chain is what? Cyclohexa. So that's a six-member chain that's in a ring form. So I'll do it this way. Cyclohexa. And then on carbons two and five, we have dienes. So two alkenes. And I'll just make this carbon one. So one, two, three, four, six. So the L1 starts at two, goes to three. Starts at five, goes to six. Uh, actually, yeah, not the prettiest, but yeah, here we go. And then one has an amine. And just like Linden's problem, we don't know what's actually on the end yet. We don't know how many hydrogens there is. So if we go back into the beginning and look at that, n, n, n comma n. So there's going to be two tetra, no, there's going to be two cyclohexyl groups coming off. So there's going to be a branch over here that has six carbons, so cyclohexyl, because it's a branch, and not the main chain. Okay, and then another one over here. Boom, boom, and then we have two more, because it's tetra, so the carbons three and five have it. Here we go. Three has a six-membered ring, five has a six-membered ring as well, and I think we're almost done, or if not, we're done all together. And then, 3,5, tetracyclohexyl, cyclohexyl 2,5, diene, one amine. Yep, that's it. Okay, you guys got this, great job. But that's how you name the means, and that's how you deal with when you see N in the beginning of the name of the molecule. All right, now this one I'm gonna hand over back to Lyndon, and he's gonna do it for you guys. Okay, so last one. Three, N-ethyl, N-methylamino, five, formal. 2 butoxy octane, one eight dial It's super long, but hopefully uh, after this explanation it'll be seem pretty easy, and if you got it, then that's even more impressive. And so again, we're going to start with the parent chain. That's always step one, which is octane, right here. And so again, we'll have eight carbons. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And I'll just label these. Four, five, six, seven, eight. And then looking at this parentheses here, this is all going to refer to carbon number three. And so we have the parentheses, it's always going to refer to the thing in front of it. So we know three has to have the N, ethyl, N, methyl, amino. And so we'll start with the amino group of carbon three, which is our N. And from here, we can see that we have two Ns, which means there's going to be two branches, ethyl and methyl, off of our original nitrogen. And so I'll draw on the ethyl first. So, meth, meth. And then our methyl group is right there. And so this whole part, while it looks kind of difficult, it's really this simple. And so moving down the line, we have five formal. 
So off of carbon five, we're gonna have a formal group, which is an aldehyde. And so we'll have a carbon with a, a carbonyl group and a hydrogen. And two butoxy. So off of carbon two, we have a but oxy group, oxy for oxygen and but for uh, the but chain. And so we'll have oxygen and then meth eth pro but. And then one eight diol for the highest priority group. So off carbon eight and one, we're gonna, we're gonna have an aldehyde. But because it's the highest priority, these carbons are gonna be represented in this aldehyde as well. So we're not drawing an extra full aldehyde functional group. So we're just gonna add on our double bond O, our H to eight, and our double bond O and H to carbon one. And so this is the final answer. Again, if you got that, good job. It's pretty long, pretty hard, but yeah. Um, back to Brian. Mm -hmm. Yep. All right. Awesome. If you got all four structures. Great job, guys. Uh, part two, we're gonna have even harder problems that might have like esters, carboxylic acids, and mids. So be, for, be sure to check that out. And as always, if you like this video, make sure you like it down there. Hit subscribe if you want to get updated. Hit the bell button when we make new videos. And once again, the clutch Club coupon code is orgomadez pen. And be sure to tell your friends if you like this video, and we'll see you guys in part two. Alright? Bye.